You're listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and this is the show where you get expert advice about the heavy duty parts you buy and sell and keep you informed about what's happening in the industry. Do you repair trailers? We are giving away a ProCheck 720. This is a commercial trailer, automatic light and electrical tester valued at over $1,000. It takes just five seconds to enter. Go to jamieirvin.ca slash giveaways. That's jamieirvin.ca slash giveaways. Sign up today and you could be the new owner of one of these awesome tools. It was 1998. I was a kid fresh out of school and I was working in a reman shop and my boss told me to go get a Wabco valve. And I thought to myself, what the heck is a Wabco valve? 22 years later, I know Wabco very well and I'm really excited to have two business leaders from Wabco here today. Abe Aon is the general manager and business leader for after sales service and support. And Colin Shaw is the North American marketing and business development leader for Wabco. Abe and Colin, welcome to the podcast. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. So Abe, I'd like to direct this first question at you. Can you give us a sense of the global scope of Wabco? Sure. Uh, First of all, Wabco is a a very global company. We're basically in all corners of the world. Uh, We have major operations on uh, all the continents except for Antarctica. We don't have anything there. Uh, But I'm sure we do have product there with some of our industrial machinery. Uh, The products that we do carry, though, also span kind of the extent of both the tractor and the trailer and some off-highway products. The major products that we have go from foundation braking systems, such as air disc brakes and brake chambers, going into ABS modules, both on tractor and trailer, and then really going into the advanced driver assistance systems with things like OnGuard or TrailerGuard that give active braking and safety. So Wabco really plays all the way from your basic systems all the way up into your advanced systems and then working into the future technologies of electrification and automation. Yeah, so it's a lot more than the air compressors and air valves that I was dealing with uh, 20 some years ago. Colin, what does it mean when Wabco says it's mobilizing vehicle (laughs) intelligence? Yeah, uh, so, the way we look at a vehicle, um, you know, in the early days, you know, braking systems, foundation brakes, you know, they were seen largely as components to a truck. And what we have today is, as the industry continues to move towards uh, higher levels of safety automation, uh, higher levels of vehicle reporting, and as fleets are under scrutiny to reduce their costs and to be very cash conscious, uh, in intelligence and the understanding of the vehicle uh, become paramount to operate operating your organization and to um, making it run smoothly. So what we like to do is globally, we have a strategy to make sure the information that we can provide, we can take that information <clears throat> and bundle it in a way that the fleet can digest and provide actionable intelligence on. So for example, in North America, uh, we recently just announced what we call our trailer cast device. And we, for a long time, have had a lot of people ask us for information about our trailer ABS. And, you know, it's it can be difficult to just give the information of what is on an ABS unit just to a customer. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff there, and um, we can't just give it to everybody uh, because they, they wouldn't be able to really digest it. But what we've done in North America is we've taken a device that's able to package that information, send it to a cloud environment that a fleet is then able to digest into their their, um, current fleet management system. So they can then get things like mileage reports, um, ABS codes, door jar sensing, uh, wheel end sensing. And that way, it's not just us feeding a bunch of data to a fleet, but actually giving actionable intelligence that over, you know, the last 150 years that Wabco has been around, we understand the things and and information that fleets need. So when we think about mobilizing vehicle intelligence, it really is making sure that we can bundle and package the information we have and provide 
real actionable insights for fleets rather than just inundating them with data. Yeah, and that makes so much sense to me because as we make a concerted effort to empower people with information, there is uh, that possibility of overload. So it has to be usable data that can actually be, you know, we can create some actionable items out of it. So uh, just go a little bit deeper, Colin, with me on that. So when, when a fleet has access to this information, like how does it impact or change maybe what the maintenance schedule is or what, they're, what parts they're using? Like, could you give us a, a real yeah. world example? Well, I think, I think one key way is if you look at uh, CVS scores and violations, if you have a tire that's underinflated or things like lights out, you know, those are the two most common issues on trailers where you can uh, receive a violation and your truck can go down. And, it, you know, if a truck is down, it can be worth anywhere between $500 to $1,000 an hour. And so if a fleet can understand ahead of time, hey, you know, I've had a slow leak in this tire, it continues to lose tire pressure. Um, or you know, hey, this light is out, let's hurry and get that fixed before we get a violation or our truck gets pulled off the road. You know, that's real key information that puts money back into a fleet's pocket. They can use that information and potentially save themselves and their drivers a bunch of headache and a bunch of cost. And so that's just one way <clears throat> that this actionable intelligence really does provide a real world benefit to a fleet or a driver. Awesome. Abe, when it comes to safety, what is Wabco doing to really put an emphasis on safety? Well, I would say that Wabco takes a, a really comprehensive approach to safety. Uh, we're not just a parts company. We're more mm -hmm. than that. We're more than providing uh, part OEMs into our aftermarket stores. Uh, we take safety seriously. We take it from uh, the manufacturing floor all the way into the assets. You can see that Colin's wearing a mask today. We do take our employees' safety uh, seriously. But when you look at it from a, a vehicle perspective or from the assets, we look at it in three pillars. One is from a first fit perspective. We provide safety products at the OEM level, things like the ADAS, the on guard, the trailer guard, active braking systems, blind spot monitoring, right? These are things that we have. WAPCO has a long history in ABS the active braking or uh, you know, automatic braking systems and things like that. Then we look at it, we take some of these technologies that you can buy in first fit and we create retrofits. So we're able to go backwards with the fleets, things where fleets already have existing assets. Maybe they didn't select those products at the beginning. They can retrofit them. So again, adding those safety features on to existing assets. Then in the last part, when a asset needs maintenance, you need parts, we provide high quality parts that meet the OEM specification and provide product training on how to put those um, into a vehicle. So again, it's making sure that that particular vehicle is running in top shape. It's utilizing the safety systems that they have on there, being able to repair it. And then in some cases, being able to put new safety systems on vehicles. And so WAPCO really takes that seriously and it's part of our core. Yeah, and so for people on the YouTube channel watching, uh, you'll see uh, these. Uh images are flipping back and forth depending on who's speaking and Colin is working in an office environment so he's mandated to have the mask on so of course at the next trade show I'm going to walk right past him and not even know who he is <laughs> <laughs> pretty much <laughs> yeah but uh, Abe will be there and I'll recognize him and then he'll introduce me uh, to Colin that'll be great so uh, thank you for that <laughs> overview on safety and we understand how important it is especially with vehicles advancing in technology and you know you kind of touched on that Abe uh, Colin, when it comes to engineering solutions, how has Wabco tackled the issue of vehicle weight? Um, so there's really two areas, and, and it starts when you first design a product, <clears throat> you understand first what the customer needs because we don't want to put unnecessary uh, bits and pieces into a product that a customer doesn't need. And so if you take our current um, our, our new disc brake, which is what we call the Maxxis 20, or the Maxxis 2.0. So this is a disc brake we're launching this year. And compared to our previous generation, it's 13 pounds lighter. So we went from 79 pounds to 66.9 pounds on our next generation air disc brake. And when you think if you have a truck that has six wheel ends, I mean, that's, that's close to 70 pounds that you're saving in weight just in your, your disc brakes. And so, you know, the, the process we went about doing this is understanding what the market needed. And for that, we were able to identify that we could do uh, two variants. We could do a, a, um, a heavier weight variant for 
uh, heavier applications with bigger axles, and we could do a lightweight variant. Um, and this would help keep the weight down for a vast majority of trucks, things like line haul and things like that, um, that would that would get the the true benefit for that lightweight. So it's understanding you know the applications that you're working on and what you need in the in the very beginning as you design a product. Then Wabco has a very robust uh, process called redesign. And what this process does is we have a very good team of engineers who are basically just focused on being frugal. So they take a part and they, they look at every single aspect of that product and work to design that into a way that reduces every single little piece out of it that they can. And so that not only um, saves weight, but also reduces cost. And it's a very robust process we go through at Wabco where once we launch a product, we very quickly get into what we call this redesign process. And that's looking at it and making sure, um, like I said, that that we can take out bits and pieces that, that maybe can be slimmed down a little bit, uh, maybe are needed for certain applications, and uh, drastically reduce the weight. We do this for a lot of our products. We, um, we do this for our air processing products. We do this for our air compressing products our disc brakes, um, all of these products is, as we've launched them, we then immediately go into this redesign process. Um, you know, a good example is our System Saver HP. So we launched our System Saver HP a couple years ago. It was our, um, our next air processing unit. And we very quickly went and said, okay, we've got this great new air processing unit, does everything we need to do, how can we further optimize it? And so it's been a very successful process that we have here at Wabco. Um, to, to make sure that uh, we can take all of the, the cost and weight out of a product that we need to. Another recent example of that is we've done that with our uh, brake chambers. We, we look at those, make sure we can optimize them, um, see how we can take weight out, take cost out, and benefit the fleet. You know, it benefits us, it benefits the fleet, and it benefits the OEM as well. So continuous improvement is the name of the game and that's how you stay relevant even though you've been a company that's been around like you say for a century and a half that's that's an incredible yep. process. Uh, how do you manage so I was just thinking like the reduced weight on your air disc brakes. I mean that's that's awesome. That's a lot of that's a big big reduction in weight. But then how yep. do you manage the, and offset the need for like heat dis you know, dissipating the heat and, and handling the, the conditions that these trucks go through and maintaining high quality. Like there's got to be a balancing act there that you have to kind of walk a fine line. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, so a lot of the ways we do it is having a very robust testing plan. And so with the Max, Maxus 2.0, it is the lightest disc brake on the market. Um, one of the ways we've done that is um, we have a single piston disc brake and we've had uh, this is our fifth generation of single piston. So we've had a lot of experience in uh, producing single piston disc brakes. So part of it comes from just experience of the products we've, we've had in the market. The other piece is, is a very robust testing plan. So we have over 3 million miles tested on this brake with various fleets and various applications throughout North America and, and the globe. And so we make sure that we can back up the claims that we have through this very robust testing plan, because not only do we test it internally, but we also put it on the road with our customers and our vehicles to make sure that it meets their specifications. Then um, you have to come down to the manufacturing process. So our disc brake that we've been producing in, in Charleston, South Carolina is a leader in quality. Uh, we have very few issues that ever come uh, out of that plant for our disc brake. In fact, I think for 2018, we are at zero PPM of brakes coming out of that facility. So you really have to watch it on many facets of the entire life cycle of a product. It can't just be the product design because you can have a great product design with very poor manufacturing processes and that leaves you with a very, very poor product. People really don't see the difference between the two when it's the end customer. They just see it as a, as a very poor product, but we have to look at all of these different pieces and who touches the brake throughout its life cycle to make sure it's of the utmost quality. You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin, and we've been speaking with Abe and Colin from Wabco. Abe, what has Wabco done to improve energy recovery and fuel economy while reducing emissions? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good question. And I, I take it maybe even in a more broader sense of the word is what does Wabco do to help to limit the impact of our products and our industry on the environment, right? 
And again, you know, we take a, a, a corporate approach where we look at our manufacturing facilities, what we can do in the manufacturing facilities to improve efficiency, improve or reduce waste, right? Things like LED lighting. We have LED lighting in all of our offices. We have LED lighting to reduce the impact and the energy usage there. We also add in, we have a huge manu remanufacturing footprint. So Wabco remanufactures uh, quite a few of our products. It's a good business for us. We remanufacture things like air dryers and air compressors and also automated manual transmissions. But we take product back from the market. We identify things that are energy intensive that would take the most energy to be able to utilize and we reuse them when they have extra life. We couple that with new products and return to the market something that you know is meeting the latest OEM specification, so it meets durability and quality requirements. And then finally, from a product perspective, you know we really look into our products specifically by reducing things like drag torque in air disc brakes. That helps to improve fuel economy. We look at you know what happens with our air dryers or our air compressors to be able to reduce the impact on. Uh, on the engines and fuel economy. And finally, going into our aerodynamics products, we have trailer tails, we have um, aerodynamic skirts and things like that to really show improved fuel economy. So it's finding little ways and big ways to be able to improve fuel economy and reduce energy usage and finally resulting in a limited, limiting the impact of our industry on the environment. And I think that's really very important. Oh, absolutely. And it's nice to see your company taking such a multifaceted approach. Colin, Wabco manufactures for truck, trailer, bus, and off-highway. What is something that Wabco is doing right now or is, is launching now that you're really excited about? So the, most, the thing I'm most excited about right now is <clears throat> how we are unlocking the power of ADAS through our braking system. And, you know, when people think ADAS, they, they typically think camera sensors, things like that. But really without a braking system that is geared towards now driver convenience, over the next you know five years, uh, you really can't unlock what the power of those sensors and cameras can do. So in 2018, we launched our MBSP 1.0. That's called our, our modular braking system platform. And what makes me so excited is as we continue to put out new ADAS products, as we continue to try and protect, protect pedestrians, um, vulnerable road users, um, it's the ability of our braking system to unlock that power. So when you think about features like adaptive cruise stop and go, you know, the, the sensors can pick up all this information around them, but the capability of the braking system to transition from what has traditionally been more of a collision mitigation tool, trying to stop the vehicle as fast as possible when it when it detects, a, say, another car stopping in front of it, to a driver assistance tool. It has to become, you know, much more uh, finesse oriented. And, you know, being able to see how our, our braking products have made that shift from collision mitigation to driver assistance, being able to allow a driver to have a more, um, an easier or less strenuous um, time driving a vehicle and trying to control a truck, that to me makes me makes me the most excited because our braking systems are DNA and that's what Wabco is known for. And to see the the um, the way that our, our braking systems are shaping how drivers will be driving their trucks over the next decade, to me is very exciting. And to see that on the market today, um, seeing trucks being able to stop themselves, hold themselves at zero indefinitely, and then start moving again, you know, that kind of stuff is, is really game changing. And that as, as fleets are trying to attract new drivers and, you know, bring um, a different generation into this industry is these kind of features that are, that are only going to help attract um, new and, and young people into this industry. And where we go from there is, is really exciting. I mean, as, as more of these people come into the industry, there's no telling what's going to, what's going to change in our industry. So, you know, something as, as um, basic and as uh, foundational to the vehicles, a braking system, and the changes that are happening there are, are really fascinating to me because it's, it's having an effect on so many other systems in a, in a truck. Abe, if there's one thing you'd like our listeners to take away from today's conversation, what's that one thing? Yeah. Uh, so for me, it's Wabco is more than a parts company, right? Wabco is really here to be a, a 
partner in our customer's success, ultimately to provide them with products and services that can drive them to be a successful organization, right? And you know what that encompasses and what Wapco puts that in is, is partners and uptime. We're here to help them at every part of their journey to keep them on the road running at their peak efficiency and maximizing their ability to move product. And that, what I would say, is, uh, is really what I'd like for people to understand. Colin, any parting words before we sign off? No, I, I would just echo what Abe, Abe said. Um, we are, our organization is focused on making sure our customers and the people that drive the trucks that have our products on it, they, they can have uptime. And, and we're here to make sure that we serve those customers and are providing the best quality parts um, to put on their trucks and, and to service their customers. You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your host, Jamie Irvin. And today we've been speaking with Abe and Colin from Wabco. To learn more, go to wabco-auto.com. Links are in the show notes. Abe, Colin, thank you for being on HDPR. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie. Have you subscribed to our weekly email yet? Go to jamieirvin.ca slash email and subscribe today. Never miss out on any content or great deals again. Go to jamieirvin.ca slash email and subscribe today. I'd like to remind everyone to focus on cost per mile over purchase price and <coughs> let's keep those trucks and trailers rolling. You can watch our next video and don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel.